software, Sonic One, and create the bundle pack uh, for that 149 price point. And uh, as Tom started to explain, I saw Nakayama-san's face sort of turning white and getting angry, and uh, uh, he stood up and said, uh, uh, we make money from software because we don't make money really from hardware. So uh, why we give away the best software uh, away? And he kicked the chair and literally ran to the door. Then I thought, well, that's the end of my career. And he turned at the door and he said, well, I hired you to build the company and take market share from Nintendo. And if this is what you think you have to do, go ahead and do it. So he supported our plan 100% and uh, to, to his credit, I think, uh, to his great credit, because he could have easily said no. And, uh, and because of his uh, allowing us to do that, we then went on to really dramatically take share of market away from Nintendo in the next year. The concept of bundling in our industry, i.e. of putting in software with the hardware to drive accelerated sales rates or to forestall a price drop, um, is a time-honored tradition, if you will. What, what Tom Kalinske did in 1991 here with the Genesis, uh, by putting Sonic in there, a triple A AAA piece of software, kind of broke the mold, if you will, um, from what had previously happened where the um, less desirable software had been packaged in because it was cheaper and more effective to be able to push that through rather than give away what was seen to be high profit margin software. People were buying Sega consoles simply to play Sonic and with Sonic proving to be a huge success it was inevitable that a sequel should follow. When we completed Sonic 1 which was originally developed in Japan we realized that the real battlefield against Nintendo is the United States. Therefore, we brought the team to Palo Alto, uh, California, and added some American resources and started to create Sonic game. And uh, that really made uh, much uh, better, closer collaboration between the Sonic team and the U.S. marketing team. After Sonic 1, we wanted Sonic to continue to grow. We, we managed his career, much like you would manage the career of a famous actor. And so what was important is that, first of all, we grew Sonic's world, and we introduced a new character by the name of Tails, so Sonic had a friend. And then we also continued to flush out his Bibles and flush out his backstory. We were much more involved in Sonic 2, but that said, the Sonic team really did drive the design of Sonic 2 as well. Al Nelson and I were a part of making sure that the new characters that were designed fit within the entire world. But the game was definitely driven, conceived of, and developed by the Sonic team. And they did a beautiful job as well. With Sonic 2 ready for release, Sega devised an incredibly clever piece of marketing, turning Sonic into a worldwide media sensation, and yet again improving sales of the Genesis, thanks to the aptly named Sonic Tuesday. Sonic Tuesday was an industry first, and we're proud of it. It was one of the first uh, worldwide launches, if not the first worldwide launch. There was a whole lot of logistics involved in making sure that we had all the millions of Sonics delivered to every single retail outlet and making them hold it until Sonic Tuesday. And I remember talking with the president of some of the air freight companies we were using, and they were pulling their hair out and helping us manage this process of air shipping to every retail store or, and, and truck shipping to every retail store in America to make sure the product all arrived at the same moment so that it could be at retail uh, that next morning. Never before for a home video game had we witnessed the worldwide scenes of people lining up outside shops in the driving rain to take advantage of midnight openings, which back then was a true first for the video game industry. Sonic Tuesday was responsible for a major step up for the video game industry, a new PR and marketing benchmark that other publishers had to follow. Sonic 1 and 2 had been incredible hits and were just being played and played by the ever-growing fan base. Everyone just seemed to love Sonic, and while Sonic's popularity continued to rise, Sega continued to produce and release further games to add to the franchise. Sonic fans were appearing everywhere, and with it a competitive streak, as fans were eager to prove who was the very best amongst their friends. 
Everything we did was with this, with this one goal in mind, to make Sonic a very, very strong brand, a preeminent brand in uh, the video game industry and also for kids' products in general. I believe that it was the, the, the first time anybody dared put their lead product in with the hardware. It was the first time there was TV shows developed around the character. I think it was the first time there were Happy Meal promotions where we sold 50 million Happy Meals with Sonic uh, characters in it. I think it was the first time a character was in the Macy's Day Parade, you know, from a video game. So I think there were a lot of firsts that, uh, that we did. And certainly it was the first time anybody made fun of their main competitor in television advertising and kind of ridiculed their, their main competitor in television advertising. Then in 1998, Sonic's move into 3D was a big success thanks to Sonic Adventure on the Sega Dreamcast. この、ま、20年間の歴史の中で、ま、一つの大きなターニングポイントっていうのが、あの、ま、1998年のソニックアドベンチャーだったと思います。え、それまでメガドライブのえ、ドットへのソニックがえ、3Dに敵と戦うのかというそういうドラマ的な部分が初めてこうゲームの中に加わったのがソニックアドベンチャーでしてえ、ま、あの喋らなかったメガドライブのソニックが初めてえ、キャラクターとしてこう皆さんにこう初めて